my studio. <laughs> I'm going to just invite you in for a few minutes. I'm in the process of recording some things for the new album on sailing. I'm going to go in tomorrow to, to mix this tune. Um, this is uh, called Sailing Dreams, and this is one that came entirely in a dream, uh, except for a few words <laughs> that I, I added. So it was one of those amazing moments that uh, I just woke up from this dream, and, and it, when I was even in the dream, uh, I was hearing this, this music, and then I realized, where's that coming from? It's coming in my head. It's a gift. And when I woke up, uh, I may have told you this before, but I could remember the vocal line, the harmonies, uh, the two guitar parts, the bass, and the drums. And so it was just a matter of reconstructing that. And uh, a lot of the words of it I could remember, but I did write a few of the words, so I do consider myself a co-writer of this along with the lady in my dream. So um, I can show you how much we have so far uh, recorded uh, in the reconstruction of, uh, of the dream song. So, and it was really this song that promoted the, the whole album project. And uh, so I'm excited to be uh, really embarking on this project uh, in between tour schedule. So I want to thank all of you who are tuning in from Florida. Uh, we had a great time in Florida last week, uh, last two weeks, and heading off on Friday to go to Arizona. Uh, I have a couple free days. If you're near Phoenix, uh, we can do a, you know, guitar master class if you like. Uh, during my free day and a half, and then go on to Hawaii from there. So uh, let all your Hawaii friends know uh, I'll be on the Big Island uh, that time and playing a volcano and also Kona. So I hope you can tune in. Uh, hi, Marlene. Uh, <laughs> good to see you. Uh, and, uh, and Bunny, uh, I remember uh, the last time I was in Hawaii, it happened to be the same time as the Tommy Emanuel uh, workshop that happened to be right there so that was fun to, to stop in and say hey uh, so uh, let me show you a little bit of this uh, you know, first let me say hi to, to Michael who's uh, tuning in from Connecticut and um, Dave yeah good to good to see you Warren and uh, so now let me show you my studio first before I, I uh, tune you in on the, uh, the project so far of uh, Sailing Dreams. So this is just my very simple setup. I have this microphone. Uh, this is a uh, Bronner stereo mic. I've had this for, for many years. I, I cashed in the proceeds of three European tours for this one microphone. <laughs> so that's my one piece that I've used for all my albums. And it's just been, just been great. A very natural sound for that and just um, run that uh, you know into the the pro tools and uh, i want to thank uh, phil keggy for loaning me his digi 002 mine started to uh, get a little old and so um, phil had just upgraded and um, i'm using his digi 002 many uh, many great albums came out of this little little piece, so I figure if, if Phil Keggy's music can sound that good, <laughs> uh, I'll use it. So uh, we're, uh, we're running through that, and uh, yeah, very simple setup. And uh, then uh, when I am recording with other instruments, I will go to other studios uh, that have a, a bigger setup and, and isolation, that sort of thing. So. Um, and I want to thank, if Brad Cole is, is listening right now, we're uh, going to head over to his studio tomorrow. I recorded a lot of the Acoustic Chef uh, at his studio, and he did all that engineering for it. So, so that's great. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll play you a little bit of this. Uh, and uh, this is what we have so far on, uh, on Sailing Dreams. And uh, Brian did a little visual behind it. This is unmastered, unmixed. Above the waves and live from day to day Where life is not predictable Wondering what is round the very next bay I'd like to raise the sails again Watching for the whales again And never have to say I wish 
wish that I had done the things that I can't do when I'm too old to play. To breathe again, love again, laugh again, love again in real life. So we have a few things to do with that recording. Um, you might have heard the, the harmonies in there. We're going to tweak the harmonies a little bit. We have Christy Lene uh, in, is doing that high harmony there. So uh, she does uh, some beautiful parts there. And I'm looking to add or, or change out a little bit of the harmony parts. Also, there's four, uh, four guitars, actually, uh, that was I saw a comment asking if that was double tracked. Uh, I tried it on four different instruments, and I'm kind of popping back and forth. And uh, tomorrow we're gonna, gonna kind of make a decision which guitar parts to use, which ones to take down in the mix. In the dream, there was a little steel string part doing, uh, you know, the, the, uh, this little offbeat thing and, uh, and some little sparkly stuff up there. And then uh, the main instrument was doing this kind of finger picking uh, part. And so I'm trying to reconstruct that. Also, it was, it was a really good mix in my dream, and I'm trying to get it back to how clean and beautiful that mix was with uh, you know, all the parts separated. So I know Brad Cole is going to do a great job uh, getting it uh, to where it was. You know? So it's a matter of, of redoing that. And oh, I, I say hi from, uh, from Shimo, uh, and I'm playing a Shimo guitar. He's tuning in from, from Japan right now. And uh, thank you, Shimo. We got, I got home from tour, and there was this great book here are Shimo guitars. This is fantastic. Wow, look at, look at these instruments in here. Um, so uh, I want to thank you for mine. Mine's sounding nice, isn't it? It's nice. It's mellowed in over the years that I've had this. And, and I've been using this for uh, when I'm playing in the Chicago area, in the, in the Midwest, uh, for shows there. And uh, so I have it now back in Nashville, so I'll be able to use it more often. Uh, so, uh, great stuff. Look at this. Uh, so, thank you so much for the for the book, and uh, what a nice instrument as well. So, uh, nice to see you chiming in there. So, hey, hey to you. 
And uh, a couple, couple more comments. Bunny says, oh yeah, that was a great time in Hawaii. Uh, she was there and it was uh, wonderful. We are so looking forward to, to coming back and uh, visiting with our friends there as well. So uh, that's one great thing is, uh, you know, being able to travel again. It's so nice to see our friends in real life. And, you know, nice to see you here too, I have to say. And uh, uh, greetings, I see greetings coming in from Cincinnati. And uh, Warren says, hey, uh, and Bob as well. So, you know, Tony, hi. So, um, also Robert McGlinchey says, that is a great uh, intro to acoustic sailing. So um, Brian has been putting together the acoustic sailing shows on YouTube, and we're using that song as, as an intro. And one cool thing I'll show you later on today um, is there's a new episode just up that has the very beginnings of one of my tunes in there, of Tides, when I just started writing that. And that was just written on board. So Brian's are, Right here, hey. <laughs> How's your acoustic sailing uh, episode coming along? I haven't seen the one yet. I haven't, I haven't seen it posted. Just fine, just yeah, fine. Good, good. We'll, uh, we're working. We'll, we'll post uh, a little clip of that. Is that okay? At the end of the, end of the show. Oh, please do. It's okay. So we'll give them. And you've got a package. I got a package. Oh, uh, got a big package. It's a good time hang for on, the package. Hang on, hang on. I think there's time. I've cut the tape for you, so it's ready Thank to go. Thank you. This came today from Mason Williams, so I thought it'd be fun to open it here. And uh, uh, Mason was, uh, there's a, a story behind this. Uh, I was playing in Eugene, Oregon, and a guy came and, and to the show and said, my teacher wanted to come, but he couldn't make it, and that's Mason Williams. Now, Mason Williams, the guy who wrote Classical Gas, you know, I'd known about him for a long time, and he had you know, relayed, relayed the message, you know, could you join him for breakfast? Well, I went over there for breakfast, and he sh started telling jokes that he'd written for the Smothers Brothers, and playing music that he'd written, and a recording of Tommy Emanuel playing classical gas that was just amazing. That was the first time I heard it at Mason's house. And pretty soon it was lunchtime, and his wife you know, invited me to lunch, and, and uh, then it was dinner, and I got an invite to dinner, and then, and then she said, well, look, we have an extra bedroom here. Why don't you just stay and, and uh, leave tomorrow? So I ended up um, leaving after breakfast the following day. <laughs> so staying a, a full day longer. And uh, one of my students, oh, look at this. We've got, uh, uh, looks like a new album by Mason Williams. Oh, it's got oranges on it. And uh, uh, Royal Road Test, California songwriter. This is cool stuff. I'm going to wait to hear this. And, uh, well, how generous. Look, the music for classical gas. This is because one of my online students was learning classical gas, and there was a part I didn't know, because I just kind of sounded it out. I never really worked it up. Um, and so I said, well, why don't we call Mason? And so we did, and he answered the question right away, what, uh, what the student was looking for. And so now, no more excuses. About I guess I have to learn it for real, okay? So you can hold me to it. It's now, I'll, you know, put it on. Uh, and Oh, there's some, also some John Doan music in here, some John Doan CDs. Mason is great friends with John and published some of his tunes. John recorded some other of Mason's tunes. Uh, ooh, look at this. And then the full collection of music by Mason Williams, the classical gas collection. Awesome. There's going to be some great stuff in here. To look. So I'll put this on my music stand. So I don't sight read very often, but uh, let me see if the first part is the way I remember it. <laughs> okay. Uh. just the way it is. It's a little different from the way I remember it. But that sounds right. Okay, that's going to be a project right there. All right. So, uh, 
and if some of my students are chimed in, you want to learn it, I now have the real way to play it here. So uh, it's, uh, we can work on that for sure. Oh, I have some more comments coming in here. Whoa, a whole pile of them. I'll have to uh, answer some of, the, some of them later on. Uh, yes, uh, oh, Patty from across the street. Uh, ah, she, let's see. <laughs> she says, you make my Monday night dinner prep so enjoyable. Thank you. <laughs> this is what I'm here for, is dinner music. I mean, that's what the whole Acoustic Chef was about, after all. And John Wise says, hey, from the Music for Life Alliance. Uh, and uh, they uh, funded one of the concerts in, uh, in Florida, a, a great, very successful fundraiser for a camp uh, that teaches music to kids. So that was, that was a great, great to do. And uh, that went beautifully. And, and Seb says, hey, okay, so, well, uh, I have promised here to uh, let you hear a little bit of the acoustic sailing, but before we do that, I was thinking uh, there, there was another tune that I dreamed, so that, that sailing dreams was only the second time that I remembered uh, the music kind of to its entirety and could reproduce it. I have music in my dreams whenever I can re bring myself to think about it just the moment I wake up, because it's the very first thing that goes away is the background music in your dreams. So I have the theory that everyone has background music in their dreams, but you have to catch it just as soon as you wake up and, and think, okay, what was the music that was playing in that dream? Yeah, and then it can come back. But uh, there was one time that I dreamed a part that was three guitars, a nylon string, a steel string, and an electric. And I called Jeff Coffin to play the electric guitar part on the saxophone. And so it worked out pretty well. So uh, this is called Living Out a Dream. I'll bring this, this moment back that I recorded this with Jeff. One, two, one, two, three.
uh, Jeff Coffin is uh, such a great player on that soprano sax. It, uh, it sounds better on that than the original dream, you know, on the electric guitar. And uh, I don't know if there's any people who are, you know, doing some Freudian interpretation of dreams or something, but uh, in the dream, the first part of it, where it was just kind of um, this, this section that goes... Uh, arpeggiated section. In that part, I was looking at the reflection of leaves underneath a tree. The sun was shining and the wind was blowing. I'm just watching the, the, this design of the reflections of the leaves during that section. And then in the second part where uh, where it gets a, a little uh, kind of more of a pop feel on, on that that section, I was in a square room with a round skylight, and I was rising up, and then out of, out of the round skylight, there was another square room with another round skylight, and raising up again out of the next skylight. So that's kind of an uplifting uh, part, uh, the second half of it. And that place where Jeff was improvising in the middle, along with those chords, that was not in the dream. That's the only part that was not in the dream. I decided to add a little improv part. And Jeff is the first one who really made that improv part come to life. It's, it, that that uh, in the the music that I wrote out, I just wrote the chords there and just say the lead player can do whatever they want to, in that section. And uh, I really love what what Jeff did there on that. So, uh, but all the rest of it was uh, just the way it was in the dream on that. And uh, we also had somebody ask about the the wood on this guitar, the the wood on the sides, is uh, very pretty on that and uh, on the back uh, I have my my neck up here on this to uh, lift it up so but uh, see underneath that the very very pretty wood as well on that, on that instrument so um, some other some other haze oh yeah t uh, Tom there said that uh, he wants to sign up for the classical gas course so I why don't we do a, a shared private lesson on it uh, I have been doing those sometimes on Sunday afternoons so I'll take a look at my schedule and uh, we'll learn this version of classical gas on uh, Sunday afternoons uh, or sometime that's uh, that's doable for everyone if maybe an evening is better and I'll also check my tour schedule see what see what times work out um, I'll go ahead and set that up and just text me uh, if you want to on the you know um, right here or or send an email uh, muriel at murielanderson.com if you're interested in, uh, in joining that does work we always limit the shared private lessons to five people so a uh, maximum of five in that and then we can do it online through string masters and uh, oh, Warren is asking uh, what kind of wood that is, and uh, if Shimo is there, if you can go ahead and answer uh, what type of wood is on this on this instrument, because I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, I don't want to spend too much time because I got to get back to my studio. Uh, There's this beckoning to me. I have some other tracks there that are not as well mixed, so everything is. Uh, uh, pretty far off. I want to get it a little closer for the uh, for the mixing session tomorrow, so there's not as much to do. And, oh, uh, gee, Texas. Hi from uh, Helena, Montana. I love Montana. Boy, I'd love to go back to Bozeman sometime again. And, and hey from Neil and Clearwater, so uh, love to go back uh, there. Next next Florida tour, we, we had such a nice time in that, that area. So, um, let's go ahead and show you some of... Uh, little bit little preview of what's just got posted on the YouTube channel Acoustic Sailing. Here it is. Camden I'm classic movie. sailboats great and small. Oh yeah. Look and this that. is the lighthouse at the end of the causeway on the northern side of Rock Harbor. How am I doing on uh, what, what do we have? Say it again. We have a nice beam Win. Muriel, you're talking sailing. You know that makes me crazy. Uh, please. <laughs> Bissell now, bubbler later. Oh, <laughs> ah, yes. Oh, Brian, is always in. busy, but especially so during the Classics Cup Regatta, which is going on today and tomorrow. 
We couldn't even get a dock or mooring space, so Nick suggested we anchor off Lake Memorial Beach, but we chose to anchor behind Curtis Island instead to better see the coming and going boats. Yeah, that's tip, that house uh, shape is typical. Let's go. Wait. All right. I miss seeing this guy. I really am. <laughs> yeah. That's, like, that's neutral. <laughs> the Hunchback of Camden is here with us. Yes, with my harp guitar on my back, getting ready for the long throw back to Avocet. About tides, and that's what we're waiting for right now. We're waiting for the tide to change so that the boat will stop rocking quite so much. Tides will rise and fall, 11 feet or more. Bring your boat up high upon the shore. Well, our oh, yeah, here at Camden sweet. has a few hazards that low tide has revealed. So where are you on your way to? Uh, just down to Roke and back. Oh yeah. oh yeah, we saw a lot of... Hopefully we'll get that far. A lighthouse on Curtis Island was first authorized by President Andrew Jackson in 1835. The present one was built in 1896. Locals got together and convinced the Coast Guard to donate it to the town of Camden rather than auction it off. We saw a beautiful old schooner headed across our bow, and wouldn't you know it, it was our old friend, the Stephen Tabor, with Captain Noah at the helm. He gave a wave, though I'm sure it wasn't because he recognized our little boat the way we recognized his. Built in 1871, the Tabor is the oldest documented sailboat in continuous service and is an historic landmark. That's uh, Stephen Tabor bo boat. Uh, that's the one that we boarded. And uh, Brian, I think that Captain Noah recognized us. I, I think he uh, would have paid attention to the type of boat we were on. After all, we, after we boarded the boat and in insisted that we were pirates taking over the boat, <laughs> he said, well, I need a day off anyway. And he invited us on board. And it uh, turns out he is a blues player and took out his guitar and harmonica. We ended up jamming. And so because of that, I actually wrote a tune called Captain Noah and recorded it with Phil Keggy. And uh, I'm going to hopefully get Pat Bergeson to play harmonica on it. So I'm uh, going to see if Pat's going to be available at the end of the month to, to add that on and uh, kind of capture that moment uh, with Captain Noah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, some cool... cool re remembrances of, uh, of that trip that was uh, really inspirational to kind of go back in time by by sailing up the coast of Maine and, and uh, uh, working on another tune called Sailing to Yesterday and uh, we're looking uh, looking to add a man's voice to that a real sailorly voice so um, and uh, another couple Hayes um, Oh good, uh, Shimo had uh, answered that this is indeed uh, Brazilian rosewood on this guitar. Oh, that's probably one reason it sounds so nice. And, uh, well, um, if there's nothing else, I guess I should uh, sign off, uh, finish my recording session here, and start getting ready for our tour to Hawaii. Anyone tuning in uh, from Hawaii uh, or Arizona? or Las Vegas. I, I'm, we're going to stop in Las Vegas on the way back, and I just got a text here from, from Bob Sercio, who's putting that together, and he says that's going to be open to the public. So it'll be a little house concert, a little workshop. Uh, anyone in the Las Vegas Henderson area in Nevada, uh, please go ahead and uh, send us, uh, send us a, an email or a text, and we'll send you details. We'll eventually post it on my website as well, and that'll be on there. And then a little workshop in Knoxville. So if you happen to be tuning in from Knoxville, uh, we're going to stop there on the way back from Roanoke. Uh, that's at the, uh, I think the 
20th. We'll be doing that March 20th. And uh, you can sign up for a workshop there. That's uh, already on the website, so that's up. So, uh, okay, that's all the news from uh, Lake nashville -Agon. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll play, I guess I'll play you a, a tune, a, a going out tune, uh, either on harp, well, I'll do it on harp guitar. Um, because the last concert, we got a lot of comments from, uh, about view from space, so I'll do a little view from space for you. And I'll, I'll send this out to the, the Space Center in Phoenix. Uh, great folks there. We weren't able to put together the concert there, so um, hopefully we'll, we'll set that up for next time. Uh, but if you're in the Phoenix area, do let me know, and uh, maybe we can you know, meet up for lunch or something. Okay, here we, I'll play a little View from Space to sign off tonight. Okay, we'll see you next Monday. Bye.